Hello once again, Sand Shark fans. Welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. I'm Jody Vermilia, and I'm joined today by the head coach of USCB Baseball, Jeremy Bam, we call him Christian. Well, Bam, we survived opening weekend. It wasn't quite how you had envisioned or how the university right. had envisioned. Mother Nature right. had some issues she threw our way. But when we played on Saturday, finally, some good stuff happened, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, you, know, you, you always want to start off the season with, with sunny and 75 and um, dry turf and, and just everything to move smoothly. But we saw you know, early in the week that that wasn't going to be the case. So, uh, you know, it is a, a unique battle to get yourself ready physically and mentally, but also the, the facility itself to get it ready. Sure. You still stay sharp for game day. But you're right, once we got going, it was, it was a good result. You all were out there late Friday night and early Saturday morning getting the field yes. playable, right? Yes, that, that was unique. That really started um, – I guess it started Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday. I can't remember which day. Thursday, uh, we began. We got a little rain Wednesday night. Right. Um, so we spent uh, most of Thursday prepping the field to get it ready to get the tarp on top on Friday. Um, so we got the tarp ready. You know, we practiced a little bit Thursday, tarp down, and then we pulled Friday. Uh, I think the guys met about 10 p.m. And we got a little break in the weather. We funneled the water off, uh, put the tarp up, and then you know, uh, Albert and Coach Roberts and myself started – they kind of work on the surface, and we dropped some some quick dry that night, and some turfus, uh, raked everything in, and as we're doing it, you know the the drizzle set in a little bit, and you know, you're watching you know, four radars and trying to figure oh, out yeah. what kind of window you're going to have to get the field yep. ready, and knowing that Saturday we wouldn't have a whole lot of dry time, mm -hmm. uh, so we had to get it ready. So we we left about midnight uh, early Saturday morning, and we were there at you know, 6:45 or something Saturday morning, and um, added another oh, put about 20 bags of product of, of turfus, wow. 20 bags of quick dry. Um, and then we, we couldn't drag it with the machines. We hand raked the field and try to get it ready. Uh, and it just, it is one of those days, you know, it's going to be a long day and you know, you're going to have, and it rained at 745 Saturday morning with not a blip on the radar. So it was a long, cold, damp yes, day. Yes, it was. Yes. How do you prepare as a player when the conditions are that damp and that cold? Is, it, is there a certain different mindset you have to take? It's tough. And we talk a lot about that. And we really hit it hard on Thursday and kind yeah. of preparing the guys ahead of time. We talk a lot about, you know, even throughout the course of the season and preseason about there, there's going to be days where you're going to have to focus. There's going to be things that are outside of your control, whether it be umpires or whether it be weather. There's going to be days where you've got to prepare for that, and you can't just show up and expect to go right away and, and be there. Um, so we, we hit them again Friday night early, you know, at, well, early Saturday morning, about you you got to be prepared for the long call. This is a long day. You know, our conference weekend, two nines are long days, mm -hmm. and you've got to stay sure. focused for 18 innings. and. And when we have weather like this, you, you've got to stay prepared. There's going to be days that we put the tarp on, take it off, and you sit for two hours, and you do it again. And you know, as a player, it, it's very challenging. You, you've got to be even keel. You can't be too high. You can't be too low. If you go in there and drink three Red Bulls and be ready to go at 8 o'clock, you know, that's not going to happen. Sure. You know, you, you're going sure. to crash by 9.15. Oh, yeah. So you know, we, we talked a lot with our guys of, of preparing for the potential for a long day. And we knew that 12 o'clock was going to be a reach once you know, it started raining at 7.30. Uh, so then you push it back to to three, and again, every time we met with the guys, just listen. You you have got to be mentally prepared, and physically prepared. I feel like we could prepare them physically once we were there, but sure. you you've got to be prepared into it. You can't you can't take the time off. You can't let your mind wander. You've got to be all in the entire time. And it is a long day. And when you when you get done at six seven o'clock that night, you you're going to be mentally fatigued. You're going to be beat. You're going to be physically tired because it did take a full 24 hours of, of mental focus to get through that day. So our, our guys did a great job with that. It was the ultimate trap uh, to start a season. You know, you're amped up for game one, the first start of the season. You've got a team coming in, their first game ever. So, you know, they were excited. Right. Yep. You know, they were going to give their best shot, their best effort. And then for us to delay, you know, five hours at a time, and then you have the, the tarp pull, and then all the, the you know, the, the routine we normally have was completely off the board. Um, it was a perfect trap for our guys, you know, and I explained that to them. You know, we're going to see what we're made of pretty quickly, and they did a, a fantastic job handling that. When the game started, I know your plan originally for the three-game series was to run Aben Collins out right. for the first game, Matt Melatesta for game right. two, and then Harrison Bell for game right. three. And what ended up happening, which worked out great, right. is they each pitched two innings right. of the game we played. Right. They struck out nine batters. Right. They looked fabulous. Yeah, they were, they were great, and, and a lot goes out to those guys' hard work and Coach Roberts and the plan he puts together. The other thing about it is, is we knew nothing about Mac U. Um, and we really pride ourselves from a scouting standpoint of, of knowing more about the opposition than they really knew about themselves. And, and really, we didn't get we didn't get a roster until Mitch got it the day before. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I didn't get their lineup card until the plate meeting. You know, yeah. So knowing nothing about 
um, then was difficult, how you prepare sure. for that. And Coach Roberts had a really good game plan going into it um, on the stuff we could find about, you know, their playing style and, and the coach's style. Um, but they did a great job. They eliminated free baseball early on. That's what we wanted. Eliminate walks and hit by pitches. Uh, defensive eliminate errors and let our guys pound the zone with what they had. Sure. Um, it was a, a drastic difference. And Coach Roberts and I had talked a lot, and he had a great plan. He really did. Um, and we had thought, well, here's how we're going to stack it up with three games. And if we go to two games, how are we going to stack that up? If we go to one, um, what's the best thing that can prepare us mm -hmm. for down the road? Obviously, you know, we knew right away Eamon was going to be really good. His stuff was great. His breaker was good. He was in yes. the zone. You know, so the you know, my gut as a head coach, I mean, let that guy roll. You know, let, let's go out there and just let him roll, let him get outs, and see, let's him, let him get to his pitch count. Um, and coaching, you know, he was the, the smart one of the bunch. And so, you know, we, we've got to, you know, stick to the plan. You know, we've got to get guys reps for the weekend. And we did it. And Eamon threw 18 pitches in two innings, and he went through, you know, 45 pitches in the pin over the next hour. And then Matty did the same thing. Those guys got their pitch count in the bullpen, did a great job. Um, and they did. You know, they were they were clean for, for six innings. Yes. And that's – um, that was that was great to see. It was a phenomenal start for those guys. Seven pitchers combined for 12 strikeouts. Yes, sir. They only gave up two hits. Right. Of course, the Santrox won six to nothing. And on the right. offensive side, you got Leandy, yep. who's new, that led the charge with three hits. You got a couple of hits apiece from uh, Milhan right. and from Keith Olmo, who's back in the lineup. Right. Glad to see that. Um, how's it feel to have that team back on the field to see them produce, to see them hit? With pitching, with defense, we saw Tavares right. Terrell turn a couple oh, of plays. Yeah. At third, we got used to that last right. year. Right. He's back to his old tricks. Sandstrokes are looking good. Yeah, it was it was a good day. You know, offensively, um, you, you want to get out there and you want your guys to see something different other than than our guys. Um, my biggest concern going into the first game was seeing a polished, soft throwing left-hander who mm -hmm. can control a secondary pitch because we don't have that on roster. Uh, the guys we do have have been injured and we haven't seen that. And, and I told Coach early on, you know, they're, they're going to throw a left to get us early. Um, and if so, it's going to take us some time. And sure enough, they threw a lefty that was polished. And, you know, it was a good high school career. Um, he's going to be a good pitcher in college. And, and he was polished. He wasn't scared. He attacked outside third, and, and he, he missed secondary stuff well. And I knew it was going to give us difficulty. Our guys just haven't seen it since September. Um, and that's a hard thing to, to replicate. So I knew it would take us some time. But, yeah, it, it just to see him get out there and execute the plan we have in place. Um, you know, the conditions were soft. They were wet. You know, they didn't allow the conditions to, to overtake their mentality, which I thought was, was fantastic. Um, and I knew offensively it would take some time, and it did, but it, it, we didn't get ourselves in poor position. We had guys in scoring position, and I think on the day we were 4 of 10 with runners in scoring position, which is not where I wanted to be. Um, but we had some, some clutch hits there, and then Lucky squared some balls up, mm -hmm. and uh, our bump game was strong. I think we were 3 for 3 on push and drag, yep. um, and, and that set us up. And then when we did get free baseball, we took, we took advantage of it. Um, uh, the big thing for for Mac U was I was impressed with the way they caught the baseball. Absolutely. My concern was, you know, they're not going to catch it. You know, we're going to have free baseball for days. But they did that shortstop in the middle infield, made some good plays. And that, you know, you take into account a, a lefty that was polished that could pound the zone, and you got a middle infield that can catch it. And it it, it saved them for, for a while. I think, uh, and our guys out executed at the end. I think Mac U's got a lot to look forward to yeah, in, I mean, in their baseball bunch of, program. Bunch Jason of young guys. And, coach did a good job getting his team ready. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have a great career down the road. You know, it was nice to see them out there and getting their feet wet as well. And we got a 6 to nothing victory, so we're off and running. And the next opponent for right. us has a special place in your heart, right. Point University, your old yes, stomping sir. grounds. Yes, sir. How do your emotions play into planning for the doubleheader that's going to be Friday starting right. at 1 at Sand Shark Park, followed up by a single game on Saturday? What's going through your head to play your old, your old place where you worked and led them? Right. For years, right? Right. Yeah, I, you know, I had a, a good two years there, and we, we won a bunch, a bunch of games and went to the World Series, and um, it, it was it was a great uh, a great time for us. Uh, you know, my daughter Emsley was born there, and um, you know a, a great family atmosphere at Point University. Coach Tyler's done a great job as the head coach there. He was on our staff at uh, at Point was was my pitching coach when we first got there, and, and he's done a, a tremendous job with those guys. Uh, it, it's a unique. It's a unique feeling, I guess. I know when I was at Virginia Intermont playing Union College for the first time was, was challenging. You know, playing my mentor um, and trying to win a game against him, how excited I was to finally get a win against those guys. And, and now going back and playing point, it's, it's a little different. Um, none of those guys there um, were, were my players or played for me. You know, we waited, waited four years out, so all mm -hmm. those guys are focused out. Mm -hmm. now, I know their Friday night starter last week, Keegan, was, was one of our recruits, and we signed him last. So I know there's a couple guys that we signed in that last recruiting class who are still there. Um, so the, the players are new, which is good, you know, so I'm not facing against guys that, that I had. Uh, but it is, it is unique, you know, I'm excited for our guys to play those guys, and I've got a good relationship with Coach Tyler, and he's done a great job. And so I look forward to seeing him 
uh, and what he's what he's done there at Point University, been able to continue um, the new tradition we set there, and, and watch that program continue to build. Uh, so I'm excited to play. It is, uh, you know, I, I try to treat it just like any other game. It's it's a fun a fun time to see old friends in sure. the baseball community. Um, and obviously, I, I'm excited to, to give us a chance to, to go out there and play against a good team. You know, they're a perennial you know, opening round team, and we have been, you know, well since since we left there, they've done a great job of holding that that status. It's a big good test for us. You know, that's a team that's going to you know rival what we see on the weekends in the Sun Conference. Um, they play very similar style of play as, as we do. They still run the base extremely hard. They still try to eliminate free baseball uh, aggressive offensively. So it'll be it'll be a good uh, a really good opening season test for us. We roll into the next week in conference play. Well, we congratulate you Thank on you, a sir. six to nothing yes, sir. opening day victory. Sand Shark baseball is off and running, and we are going to be back on the Sand Shark Game Day Network on Friday. USCB takes on point at home with a doubleheader beginning at one, uh, second game at four, followed by a single game Saturday beginning at 12 noon. So that's it for us with the baseball side of Sand Shark Bites. We're going to be right back with the head coach of softball. Bailey Wigness to talk about softball's opening day. We'll be right back here at Sand Shark Bites. And we're back on Sand Shark Bites, and now we're with head coach of softball, Bailey Wigness. Opening day, come and gone, two games, two wins. Can't ask for more than that, can you? No, you can't. Uh, it was exciting, you know. It was just a long January, a long fall, uh, a long summer, really, and to get back out there and play somebody other than ourselves was exciting, and uh, Montreat was very scrappy. They're much improved from when we played them last year, so it was fun to get out there and, um, you know, two wins, can't complain. Team nine's looking good. Mm -hmm. You ran Molasso out in the yep. opening game. She gave you five great innings. Mm -hmm. And then we ran out, who'd be run out? Rachel Cat Rachel came Kat, in yep. in relief, did great yep. in game one, had some good offense. I want to talk to you about something Mitch and I mentioned on the air, and that's the top of your batting order with uh, Boykin and Frank mm -hmm. Hauser. They're the table setters. In yes. the two games yesterday, they reached base nine times. Yeah. Is that um, your approach going to be your approach moving forward, do you think? They're going to be your I get on base? I can't and, tell you all my secrets, No, of course Jody. not. Um, yeah, yeah. They just they do a great job. They get on base. I mean, and, and typically the offenses that I've been a part of, we really have never had two slappers at the top. But we kind of try to split them up a little bit, um, maybe have one at the bottom. But just they get on base so much and to start the game like that it just it puts so much pressure on the defense so um unless something crazy happens i anticipate that they're going to be there and um they're going to continue to get on base and uh score a lot of runs for us so i'm excited to uh see them and how they progress throughout the, the season and how about emily martin three oh, yeah. doubles two of which might have gone out if the wind had been blowing out instead of in like I, it I was. think she needs to hit the weight room um, a little <laughs> bit more do some more push-ups but no yeah she had a great um, a great first weekend out um, struggled a little bit last year and so just to see her progress and to see her work through some of those struggles this summer and into the fall she's focused she's you know our one of our best leaders and and I'm just really happy for her and um, you know she just she stays focused and she doesn't try to do too much and um, good things are happening for her right now. An example of that's in game two mm -hmm. you know she just came off with three doubles it would have been very easy she came up with the bases loaded mm -hmm. at one point to try to swing from your from your shoe tops and yep. hit it over the fence all she did was take an outside pitch and serve it into mm -hmm. right field for an RBI single. Yeah. Does that show the maturity of a player that a coach looks for? Of course. I think we talk about it all the time, not just with her, but with every player, to, to not try to do too much and just have a quality at bat. You know, we're not we're not swinging for the fences. Uh, you know, we want to get good barrel and, and hit gaps and just hit for the situation, and, and that's a really good example of her doing that. Um, and I think, again, that shows her maturity. Obviously, senior year, um, she's locked in and ready to go. So I'm just very pleased that. Like you said, she didn't try to do too much, just kind of hitting for the situation and trying to have a quality at bat. Let's talk a little bit about Sloan Ducey. Mm -hmm. She was a freshman last year. I think it'd be fair to say maybe she exceeded your expectations, maybe even her own expectations, the kind of year she had. 13 wins, I think, and an ERA less than two. But she had a lot of strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, it took her a little while to get her feet under mm -hmm. her butterflies, but she pitched great, but not a lot of strikeouts. Has she learned, do pitchers learn as time goes by, that you don't have to rely on the strikeout to get the out? I, I think so, and I think last year, uh, I don't necessarily know that she was trying to strike everybody out, mm -hmm. um, but I think 
I think she trusts her defense. You know, I think she really is relying on her defense this year, and it's something, again, that we've talked about with the pitchers is, you know, we have to keep our pitch counts down. We have to get outs. So I don't care how you get it. If it's a strikeout, great. If it's not, trust your defense. But Sloan's great. I mean, she – you know, they call it the sophomore slump. Um, I think that's a popular term, and it's something we kind of address, like, hey, just do you. You don't need to have the same year as last year. You don't need to have a better year than last year. You need to be Sloan, um, and she's going out and doing that, and so she threw um, four really good innings for us, and so she's going to um, obviously be a huge part of our staff, and um, all four of the pitchers who threw yesterday are going to be huge for us. You got a big weekend coming up. It's a big weekend for Sand Shark Athletics in general. You got two double headers, mm -hmm. one Saturday, one Sunday. We have Columbia International in on Saturday, St. Andrews in on Sunday. Yep. And both of those double headers, obviously, at Richard Gray out in yeah. Hardyville, and also available on the Sand Shark Game mm -hmm. Day Network with yeah. yours truly and Larry Kimball on the call. Um, what's the mindset going into the weekend? Is it do you, what do you positives do you take from a two and zero start? There are always negatives. We can always have done this better or that better. But what are you as a coach latching onto and going to encourage the team with this week and practices to take with them into those four games? Yeah, I think just looking at where we were at last year at this point to this year, I think we're a little bit ahead offensively. Um, we had some good at bats. We didn't quite string them together. So I think that's one major positive for me is our offense. And we're turning the lineup over. We may not necessarily um, – be getting the big hit when we need it or um, we're not necessarily efficient right now but that will come as as time comes um, so I think that and just our defense played great all the way mm -hmm. around we were solid um, we just have some little things to clean up so that's just kind of cleaning those things up at practice this week and um, next weekend you know just taking it one pitch at a time you know and the Columbia International they're they're very scrappy we played them in two series and just we played them in February and then again in April and they just they have improved tremendously so I expect that they're going to be tough um, St. Andrews is going to be tough so just keeping a level head taking it one pitch at a time and and focusing on us and not worrying about all the outside noise and um, the two wins were great but we got to move on and move forward and get better tomorrow at practice. Is there any added pressure the coaches poll came in last week USCB mm -hmm. softball softball is ranked number 20 in the nation mm -hmm. Does that add pressure or does that give you more motivation as a team to go out and, and yeah, keep on, keep it on? I think a little bit of both. Um, I think obviously there's pressure when there's expectations, but you can either thrive under the pressure mm -hmm. or you can crack. And so we've talked about thriving on that. But again, it's an honor to be ranked nationally. It's an Absolutely. honor to be picked number one in our coaches poll. But at the same time, we know and we have talked about we have got to show up on the field. We have a huge target on our back um, and we have to play. We have to show up. The rankings don't mean anything if you don't show up and, and win. So that's kind of been our focus and just kind of ignoring all the outside stuff. Like enjoy it. It's great. Um, take it in enjoy being ranked it's a really like i said it's a special thing to be ranked um but got to show up on the field so that's been our focus well team nine looked great on the field this weekend we look forward to next weekend two double headers again it's against columbia international on saturday and st andrews on sunday both those games at the sand shark park complex at richard gray stadium in hardyville and also on the sand shark game day network bailey thanks for your time today thank congratulations you, on a thank successful you, opening you. weekend and we look forward to seeing you at Richard Gray next weekend. Or if you can't be there, tune us in on the Sand Shark Game Day Network. Until the next Sand Shark Bites, I'm Jody Vermilia. Thanks for tuning in. Fins up, everybody. We'll see you next Fins time. Fins up.